George Orson Welles, May 6, 1915 to October 10, 1985, was an American theater screenwriter and film producer and director and a theater, radio, and film actor. In 1936, the Federal Theater Project, part of Roosevelt's Works Progress Administration, put unemployed theater performers and employees to work. Wells was hired by John Houseman and assigned to direct a project for Harlem's American Negro Theater. Wanting to give his all-black cast a chance to play classics, he offered them Macbeth. Relocated to Haiti at the court of King Henry Christophe and with the setting of voodoo witch doctors, Jack Carter played Macbeth. The play was rapturously received and later toured the nation. It is considered a landmark of African-American theater. At 20, Wells was hailed as a prodigy. After the success of Macbeth, Wells mounted the absurd farce Horse Eats Hat, a complete volte farce but also highly successful. He consolidated his White Hope reputation with Dr. Faustus. This was even more groundbreaking theater than Macbeth, using light as a prime unifying scenic element in a nearly blacked out stage. In 1937, he rehearsed Mark Blitzstein's pro-union labor opera, The Cradle Will Rock. But due to severe federal cutbacks across the country and rumored congressional worries about communist propaganda in the federal theater, the show's premiere at the Maxine Elliott Theater was canceled and the theater locked and guarded by National Guardsmen. In a last minute theatrical coup, Wells announced to waiting ticket holders that the show was being transferred to the Venice, about 20 blocks away. Cast, crew, and audience walked the distance on foot. Since the unions forbade the actors and musicians performing from the stage, the Cradle Will Rock began with Blitzstein introducing the show and playing the piano accompaniment on stage, with the cast performing their parts from the audience. This impromptu performance was a tremendous hit. Resigning from the Federal Theater, Wells and Hausman formed their own company, the Mercury Theater, which included actors such as Agnes Moorhead, Joseph Cotton, Ray Collins, George Coloris, Frank Reddick, Everett Sloan, Eustace Wyatt, and Erskine Sanford, all of whom continued to work for Wells for years. The first Mercury Theater production was Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, set in fascist Italy. Cinna, the poet, died at the hands not of a mob, but a secret police force. According to Norman Lloyd, who played Cinna, it stopped the show. The applause lasted for more than three minutes and was widely acclaimed. Wells was now very active on radio as an actor and soon to be as a director and producer. He played Hamlet for CBS on the Columbia Workshop, adapting and directing the play himself. The Mutual Network gave him a seven-week series to adapt Les Miserables, which he did with great success. Wells was chosen to anonymously play Lamont Cranston, The Shadow, in late 1937, again for Mutual, and in the summer of 1938, CBS gave him and the Mercury Theatre a weekly, hour-long show to broadcast radio plays based on classic literary works. The show was titled The Mercury Theater on the Air, with the original music by Bernard Herrmann, who would continue working with Wells on radio and in films for years. Their October 30th broadcast of H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds brought Wells notoriety and instant fame on both the national and international level. The fortuitous mixture of the news bulletin format with the between breaks, dial spinning habits of listeners from the rival and far more popular Edgar Berg and Charlie McCarthy program created widespread confusion among late tuners. Panic spread among many listeners who believed the news reports to be of an actual Martian invasion. The resulting panic was duly reported around the world and disparagingly mentioned by Adolf Hitler in a public speech a few months later. Because of the impact of this production and Wells' growing fame, Hollywood offers followed, lures which the independent-minded Wells resisted at first. However, the Mercury Theater on the Air, which had been a sustaining show without sponsorship, was picked up by Campbell Soup and renamed the Campbell Playhouse. Wells was also a practiced magician starring in troupe variety spectacles in the Warriors. During this period, he became a serious political activist 
and commentator through journalism, radio, and public appearances closely associated with Franklin D. Roosevelt. In 1941, he co-wrote, directed, produced, and starred in Citizen Kane, most often chosen in polls of film critics as the greatest film ever made. In 1942-43, Wells starred in a little-known radio series entitled, Hello Americans! This series, which featured visits to various South American countries, was done as a propaganda piece for the U.S. government. Wells received a 1975 American Film Institute Lifetime Achievement Award, the third person to do so after John Ford and James Cagney. Despite this accolade, Wells' artistic ambitions as a producer and director were frustrated by Hollywood movie studios. His one Hollywood film that remains as he conceived it is Citizen Kane, and only because its contract guaranteed him final cut. Although Wells remained on the margins of the major studios as a producer-director, his larger-than-life personality made him a bankable actor. In his later years, he struggled against a Hollywood system that refused to finance his independent film projects, making a living largely through acting, commercial work, and voiceover work. Critical appreciation for Wells has increased since his death. He is now widely acknowledged as one of the most important dramatic artists of the 20th century. In 1999, the American Film Institute ranked Wells as number 16 in their list of the 100 greatest male stars of all time. Wells died of a heart attack at his home in Hollywood, California at age 70 on October 10, 1985. He had various projects underway including a planned film adaptation of King Lear, The Orson Welles Magic Show, and The Dreamers. His final interview had been recorded the day before on the Merv Griffin Show and with his biographer Barbara Leeming. The last film roles before his death include voiceover work in the animated films Transformers, the movie, as the villainous Transformer Unicorn, and The Enchanted Journey and on screen in Henry Jagalum's film Someone to Love, released in 1987. For the Old Time Radio Researchers Group, I'm Fred Bertelson, your announcer.